I'm cold. Are you cold? I'm cold. It's cold. Hey, it's Jag. Today I'm starting the Trinity Amps Triwatt Build Kit. So, the first thing you should always do with any sort of kit or project, anything you're putting together, is have your bill of materials, your list of all of the parts you need to build the amplifier, guitar kit, whatever you're building. Uh, it's better to know if you're missing a part before you need it than when you need it. So Trinity Amps has been really good uh, with their documentation. They provide the documentation including the bill of materials and everything that you need. And I've just gone through this and there were a couple of things that were missing. It's not a big deal. Um, I have those pieces in my own stock in these cabinets up here. So in my case uh, it was missing two of the four one meg ohm uh, resistors. Um, those are a really common part in amp building. Uh, they're most common in the initial input stage uh, of your tube amp and I have a bunch of those so uh, not a problem. Uh, I did contact Stephen about that and he was very apologetic and he said hey I'll send you those parts out right away if you need them. Uh, I told him not to worry but I just want you to know he's right on top of it. Uh, one thing I will mention is uh, as I said in my unboxing um, I bought the uh, the Triwatt overdrive relay board so I can foot switch the overdrive in and out. There are two uh, versions of the relay uh, set up for the overdrive um, and one needs a separate transformer and eyelet board uh, to power the relay. The other one takes the power from the heater winding on the main transformer in the amp and does not need that separate little transformer or relay board. I have that second version. So in looking over it and the bill of materials, it said that I should have uh, a transformer and a relay board um, for the, the overdrive switch and I didn't have that. Of course, I looked at the schematics and the, and the build list and quickly realized that I didn't need it either. But if you're looking at these things and it says you need something and it's not there, double check if there might be a reason also for it not to be there. And of course, email Stephen at Trinity Amps right away. He'll get back to you and let you know. Let's get on to building. So I'm going to build this uh, amp following the documentation that uh, Stephen sends with the kit um, to the letter. Um, I have my own way of building things, but it, it's nice to try somebody else's way sometimes and see if you learn something new. You often do. I'm also going to uh, uh, build the amp exactly the way Steven specs it. Uh, I said in the unboxing that I would probably be doing some modifications, uh, but I want to uh, hear it as it was intended and uh, you know see how I like that first. The documentation has everything listed in steps that you should complete. Uh, the first step is to mount all of the uh, the chassis mounted uh, components, or at least the bulk of them. I have the control pots down here in front of me, and I always line them up in front of the hole where they're going to go. It's just easier to just kind of zip through and do this really quick once you do that. The trim pot for the um, the bias control that goes on the back I'll be installing that later when I install the uh, test point uh, banana jacks so I'm just going to set that aside for now the faceplate comes it's taped onto the chassis um, and uh, how, how the faceplate ends up being mounted permanently is um, all of the jacks and things that you put in just hold it to the to the chassis so it's not glued on taped on anything like that like Christmas. I really like taking that stuff off and then you get a, a nice clean shot of the, the template. You really see what it's going to look like. I really like the look of this template. Faceplate. All right, so working from right to left doesn't really matter. That's just how I'm going to do it. Uh, the first one to go in is the normal volume and that's a 500k audio taper pot. 
The chassis is drilled for the locating tabs for the pots. That's so if they come loose, they won't spin. Um, also, it just uh, makes it easier to make sure you orient the, um, the pot in the way that the kit is going to be referring to it when you're soldering on it later. So there are two washers. They're, they're rather thin. Uh, for the pot so you you can confuse them and think it's just one which I just did now uh, you want to put one on the back and one on the front also the locating pin fits a little bit tight in that hole um, I don't really think that's ultimately a problem um, we'll see uh, once you tighten things down it'll pull that pin through the hole So I find it a little bit faster to just go through and, and um, put all of these on finger tight and then I'll go through with a, um, a nut driver and tighten them up once I've got them all in. You don't need to tighten these super super tight when you uh, use the nut driver. Uh, if you go too tight you can either strip the, uh, the threads on the pot or you can uh, actually break the end of the pot. So. You don't want to do that, uh, just snug is is fine. The bright volume is also audio taper, uh, 500k pot. Another reason why you don't want to tighten these, you know, right from the start while you're doing this is you might need a little wiggle room uh, on the, the face plate when you get down to the end here. There's not a lot of wiggle room, everything is um, really well machined, but I've had that bite me in the butt before. You know, just a little shift can stop something from going through. So better just to leave these a little bit loose and uh, again, tighten them up when you get everything mounted. Okay, so normal volume, bright volume. The next one is the overdrive pot. Um, it also has a switch on it for activating the overdrive. Um, when you plug in the foot switch, this switch has no effect. Uh, one meg audio. Uh, this also only has one washer, unless I lost the washer. Um, let's just see what we do. And there's no locating pin on this one either, so you want to you wanna be careful to make sure you get this upright. Next is the base pot, uh, 500k audio. Um, maybe I'll do a, a video sometime on what's the difference between an audio taper and a linear taper pot. People, a lot of people have trouble getting their heads around that, partly because it involves math. If you put an, a linear taper pot in, in place of an audio or an audio in place of a linear, uh, it's not going to damage the circuit. Things just aren't going to work the way you would expect. Okay, next pot is treble, 250k linear. The mid pot is a 100k linear taper. When they label the pots, at least the alpha pots, they usually put the value of the pot right at the top and uh, they designate them A or B. A being audio taper, B is a linear taper pot. Presence, that's also a, a linear taper 100k pot. This is not a job you want to do when you're kind of cranky. Because it's kind of like doing something you don't want to do when you're cranky. Okay, master volume, 500k audio taper, sorry, 250k audio taper. Okay, so that's all the pots pre-installed. Pilot lamp and uh, on-off standby switch. This, I think he calls it a progressive switch. Um, you don't have a standby and power switch on this amp. Uh, what you have is a switch where when it's in the up position, the amp is off. When it's in the middle, it's in standby and when it's down the amp is on and operational. Also um, 
one thing to point out is that's the UK style of putting the switches in. Up is off, down is on. Of course, the US, it's exactly opposite. So I will install the, uh, the bayonet bulb and jewel first. These can be a little bit kind of tricky to get to sit right in an amp and to, to stay in solidly. It's a rather big nut that goes around the bayonet bulb um, and it's really hard to tighten it. You can't, really, you can't really get in there with a wrench. So most of the time I just finger tighten it as much as I can and then when I'm doing maintenance on the amp, I just always double check those things. One thing I do is I like to make sure the tabs on everything are oriented the same way. So I have a choice of putting this bulb in uh, with the tabs up. I could even put them sideways or down. Uh, and this amp down might come a little close. Well, it probably would come close to the uh, to the turret board. Uh, you also might come close to shorting it on the chassis. So anyway, I'm going to put it with the uh, the tabs oriented up. Getting this big nut threaded on there is kind of the the wonky part of doing this, uh, just because you don't have a lot of room to work. Uh, that one I probably will um, tighten right now while I've got a little bit of room to get a pair of pliers in there to give it a good tightening. It's not my favorite thing to use pliers for this kind of thing, but that's what I have next to me right now. And again, you don't want to over tighten this, but you also don't want your jewel lamp coming loose all the time. There. Okay, I can't spin this with my fingers right now. It's it's pretty tight. These worked well to do that. Uh, so I don't think this will come loose. And the jewel. It's a red one. Um, you can get all different colors for these. Um, I kind of like to play around with, with the color. Um, I like amber. Um, I just like the way it looks. Red looks good. Um, I use green in uh, a specific amp for a specific reason. Uh, it's one that I designed and built myself and I'll talk about that later um, or in another video. Anyway, the bayonet bulb you really don't want to, or sorry, the, uh, the jewel you really don't want to tighten with pliers or anything like that. It's got kind of a, a knurled uh, edge and you can just hand tighten it. You need to be able to get that out uh, if you have to change the bulb. Like the noise coming out of an amp doesn't let you know it's turned on. The progressive switch. I'm going to install this. It's set to the on position so I know the bat has to go this way. Looks like it should go with the tabs to the bottom because it's showing you the chassis is an L here. So if I get it wrong, I just have to turn it around later. And this has a nut on it, so you can adjust the depth of it when it's coming through the uh, the chassis. You don't want it to be too deep. So what I do also, uh, if I want this to be rather snug, I will um, spin this backwards, tighten the 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 nut up as much as I can when it's about a quarter of a turn out of the orientation I want and then I will hold the nut and spin the body of the switch it's just easier to tighten it up that way okay this video is already uh, getting a little bit long so I think this part one video uh, I'm still on step one uh, but I think this part one video I will end it here with everything uh, installed to the front uh, panel of the chassis and we'll do the back and maybe the tube sockets in the next video and move on to a couple of other things. So last three things to install are the normal bright and link jacks. Um, these jacks are, are isolated so there's no connection between them and ground so you can't get ground loops. It eliminates ground loop issues and the way that happens is by um, it's a plastic body and there's a plastic washer that goes on the on the front and then there are two fiber washers uh, so that the metal nut doesn't make any kind of ground connection like on a usual uh, jack wood. 
I believe that Stephen said you only need one of these fiber washers. Uh, I'll put this in the link position and see if we need two fiber washers or not. Actually, none of the fiber washers. Again, you only want to tighten this stuff um, so it's snug. These being a plastic body, it's also plastic um, plastic threads. You tighten it too tight and you're going to strip the, uh, the input. And I do need a fiber washer on there. Uh, what I forgot is the threads are actually on the nut, so they go inside. So nothing really sticks too far out. But yeah, one fiber washer gets this just to the right place. Also be very careful not to cross thread the nut. Uh, or that will kind of do some damage to that jack too. Okay, that's the link jack. We'll put in the normal, which right now is on the bottom because the chassis is upside down. Um, one thing I do know is that uh, these input jacks will have to come out when I wire them. Um, but I like to still have them sitting in. Uh, two reasons. Uh, one is because I know where they are. Uh, the other one is uh, when I do go to reinstall them, I just flip them around to the holes backwards and then I can solder everything on the tabs and then just flip it around and put it back in. I am going to snug all of this stuff up really quick and then I'm going to put the, the chicken head knobs on too just to be to be thorough. I know you can over tighten these because I've done it and then it strips the, uh, the nuts so just go carefully slowly and get it snug you know when it's you know when it's snug but you don't need to mash this down. Tighten up the parts. again just snug get them so they're tight you feel the resistance and then just go a, a smidgen more getting all of this these front panel components mounted and then putting the chicken head knobs on I can get a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's done it's kind of a thrill just to see that you really feel like you've uh, accomplished something even though there's nothing inside yet you've got a a front panel that looks complete. The overdrive knob, the end of the shaft, sticks out a little bit far, but there's a lot of depth to the chicken head knobs, so they should all sit just fine. Uh, the other thing is orienting the chicken head knobs. So the spin, you know, goes from here to here, you know, and it's even on both sides rather than having it where when it's all the way down, it's it's pointing straight down and when it's all the way up it's pointing you know somewhere at like four o'clock you know or having full-on pointing at six o'clock but when it's full off it's around nine o'clock i don't know if that makes sense basically you want your chicken head to kind of center whatever it doesn't even matter um i usually turn all of the knobs to their zero position and then I put in the first knob, which I basically consider to be the normal volume, the first one on the left. And I put the knob on. And usually what I do is I kind of point this knob so that it's pointing to sort of a known kind of marker. So right now I'm sort of pointing it kind of towards the middle of the gap in the end, if that makes sense. I'm going to tighten it, not too tight, uh, but just enough that I can turn it and then see where, where it stops when I turn it to the full-on position. The idea being that I want it to kind of center on this 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock position. And then all the other ones I'll just line up, I eyeball them so that they they, they look parallel. That's that's looking pretty, pretty good to me. I can live with that. So I will tighten this one. You don't want to over tighten these little set screws in here either. Uh, they're made of brass and they're quite soft and you can break them. I've done that a lot too. Uh, so I tighten them till they stop turning and then just give it just a little push. Uh, if your knobs come loose, 
you can always tighten them up again. If you lose them, they're replaceable. Uh, that looks okay, uh, the bright volume. So the overdrive knob is not tightening up right. Let's find out why. So they're all on. The front of this amp looks like it's going to look when it's done, which is really cool. Um, so everything's good. Um, all of the knobs are sitting this, the same height, so everything looks good. Uh, I can turn them all. They all turn nice. No resistance, no sort of scratchy noises. Um, I know the amp's not powered, but what I mean is it doesn't feel like there's any abrasion or dirt in the knobs. Sometimes new knobs have been sitting in a bin, you know, maybe for three, four months, six months, a year, uh, and dust gets in there and they can get a little bit dirty and you can feel that resistance and you can also hear it when you turn the amp on. Uh, so one of the things I usually do when I'm done building an amp is I'll go through and I'll clean all of the pots and the jacks just to make sure uh, we've dotted the I's and crossed the T's. Next video I'll mount the components on the back of the chassis and probably uh, finish the top of the chassis, maybe not the transformers. And uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Check the links down below. Um, I've got uh, another uh, unboxing video coming up uh, for a nice cool piece of studio gear and I'll be doing a video on that uh, part two of this build uh, should be up uh, within the next week or, or two. Check out my band One Soul Thrust. Uh, Patreon link is below. Links to our website um, and our YouTube channel uh, are also in the links below. Uh, comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if these are too short, too long, um, if you'd like any more in-depth information. And again, thanks for watching.